what's going on guys so i decided that i wanted to look at the uh, talent trees of all the tanks and i'm going to start with the death knight uh tree um so i was looking at the death knight tree i was trying to work my way through it as you can see um and i did not get to the bottom the first time i tried i was thinking oh i want this i want this i want to want this obviously this is probably not the last iteration of the talent trees here and um i did take a quick peek at the uh, paladin tree and there is not as many um talents down near the bottom as there is for the blood death knight um so i don't want to go through the entire talent tree i think that would be very boring for you i think i'm going to just look um down near the bottom here um, to see what the final talents would be that you would take in the this is the path that i took as a uh for the blood uh side of the tree but let's look at the bottom talents so i come down here i see empowered rune weapon empower your rune weapon gaining 15 percent haste and generating one rune and five runic power instantly and every five seconds or 20 seconds um that is an instant cast so it's not like a passive um, like your regular rune weapon generally uh, works. So that is a, definitely an interesting talent. Um, then you got rune mastery. Consuming a rune has a chance to increase your strength by 6% for 6 seconds. I do like that. Um, then you have Abomination's Limb. The uh, talent that uh, you get for the Covenant, covenant um, for the Death Knights and the necro lords um, and then we have blood draw when you fall below 30 percent health you drain a percentage of attack power health from a nearby enemy and it can that can only occur every three minutes so that's like a life-saving type thing a defensive style talent um, that you would take for uh, blood death knight um, and then we have Soul Reaper, which is, I believe, only on the unholy side of the Death Knight uh, talents um, currently as it stands. Um, so those are your three choices. This is more of a defensive talent. I think for Blood Death Knight, you would want to get there or you would want to come down here and do Abomination Slim. Now, these things are all over the place up top here. Um, I knew I 100% needed to get... Um, the uh, the mind freeze, and then the anticipation to give you some runic, extra runic power. So you're definitely gonna have to come along this side. Um, this side right here seems mostly optional, other than the cleaving strikes that you would probably want for uh, dungeons. Um, so I think you are more heavily going to rely on this side of the talent tree until you're coming across through, um, through this and then dropping down and down into the middle. Because um, <coughs> you definitely want to as asphyxiate over here and you definitely generally want Grip of the Dead for um, dungeons. However, you can probably skip this part right here. Um, for raiding and come down this side so basically you're gonna kind of have to look at it for yourself and and depending on the situation and what you're doing um, how you would want to build each time so I'm gonna guess that every single time you're switching from dungeon to raid you're gonna be switching multiple talents so hopefully there's like kind of like a setup where you can have um, you can kind of choose like kind of like how you hit the armor sets you can just choose uh this armor set for dungeons and this armor set for raids or this armor set for for unholy hopefully there's um something like that so you don't have to go through and individually pick one or the other and hopefully it doesn't cost money because you're going to be changing all the time um so that's uh, so let's go over to the blood tree over here um, as we were looking this is the death knight tree so all three specs are going to have this and only the blood death knight 
is going to have this. Um, so coming down through here, um, trying to work my way to bottom, I was hoping I could grab two <coughs> of these. I don't see any way that you're not going to take Crimson Room Dancing Room Weapon down here. I don't think there's any way that you're going to take anything other than this. And getting down here to the bottom was fairly difficult for me. Um, because this you would probably want for raids. I use it for raids. Um, I don't use it for um, mythic dungeons. Um, this one right here is more of a defensive style. This whole side right here um, is kind of more for raiding. And this side right here is kind of more for dungeons. Um, so and these kind of work together. So you're going, this is kind of like a <laughs> um, uh, this is kind of like your bone shield um, kind of spec over here where the um, the bones are breaking on this one and causing uh, damage to all the enemies as uh, that's this one right here shattering bone when bone shield is consumed it shatters dealing 10% of attack power of shadow damage to nearby enemies and the damage is tripled while you are in your death and decay. So you, it gives you more uh, uh, incentive to drop your death and decay um, while your bone shield is up, which it should be at all times. And you should have at all times at least six uh, stacks of bone shield. Um, that would be nice if they changed it so that it was over a period of time rather than having a certain amount of stacks because it's something that you're going to always have to look at the whole time I'm sorry for my uh, cough guys um, so this whole side right here and it goes down to bone storm which is um, kind of like it heals you and it damages the enemies at the same exact time um, so this side is more for dungeons and I don't want to put that in there because that dancing room weapon is for both dungeons and um, raiding it is the strongest talent right now and especially since it kind of has your legendary in it as well the current legendary the current meta um, of course you want dancing rune weapon I feel like that should be higher up on the list it should be um, generally every blood death knight should use it um, at least at this point unless they nerf it for some reason or what uh, so that you might pick one of these other ones but I would prefer that it wasn't I think it's nice and it's strong as it is the way it is right now um, then I dropped down and took heart rend heart strike has an additional has a chance to increase the damage of your death death strike by 40% so I mean I think there's like a blood boil uh, right now that increases the amount of damage that you do when you death strike now it's using heart rend to do that and then you have the everlasting bond which is the legendary where or no this is uh the set piece current set piece where it summons an additional rune weapon um and those both do uh damage um equal not exactly equal but close to what you currently do with uh without your dancing room weapon up um and then you ha this is the uh, legendary right here insatiable blade where your dancing room weapon generates five bone shield charges um and bone shield is consumed and cool uh cooldown of dancing room weapon is reduced by five so that is your legendary that you currently have uh that is the meta right now um for blood death knights um so these would be interesting to think that you would want to get to them, but I don't see any way that you would skip this right here. There's no possible reason that I can see that you would not take the dancing room weapon tree. Unless something changes, that's the path. It personally, in my opinion. Uh, maybe somebody has any other ideas, go ahead and comment, but I don't see it. Um, I'd like to say uh, thanks for watching, if you are watching. Um, obviously you are. <laughs> um, but 
please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to get better and uh, try to be more entertaining and be more informative for you. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching.